Hi all, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Mario Fusco and uh, I'm here to speak about my experiments with, with uh, Project Loom with uh, uh, virtual threads. Okay, so let's start with what virtual threads are. So uh, in JDK, as you know, we have native threads, meaning that uh, they are, are fin wrapper around the thread uh, provided, the platform thread, let's say, the thread provided by the operating system. So this means that uh, they are quite costly, they are quite a, a, a scarce resource on your uh, uh, JVM and, and they are quite memory consuming. Uh, it takes time to create a new uh, native thread. So in essence, we are used to you to pull them, to use them sparingly and stuff like this, okay? Uh, virtual thread are, uh, uh, takes a different strategy. They get rid of this one-one relationship with the uh, operating system thread, meaning that uh, uh, the, um, the same uh, operating system thread can be the carrier for many, many, for thousands of, of different virtual threads, and, and virtual threads can be indeed multiplexed on the same on the same carrier and and. Uh, uh, when they are resumed, they, it's, it's not said that they will be resumed on the same car carrier, so they can jump. They can jump from one carrier to to another. We will see more about this later. Uh, and the other uh, very very important uh, characteristic of the virtual thread is that uh, um, is how they behave when we do a blocking call on the on Java on the J on the JDK. When when this happens, uh, this is, this thing is being let's say intercepted. Uh, uh, it's uh, transformed in a non-blocking uh, um, call at the operating system level. The virtual thread is suspended. It's removed for from the carrier. So the same carrier can be used by a different uh, virtual thread, uh, and and. and uh, this happens until the, the, the blocking operation requested by the virtual thread finishes and uh, at that point uh, the virtual thread will be uh, wake up again. Okay, so uh, just to give a few numbers, the, the, with native thread we have around 2 kilobytes of metadata but this also depends on the operating system. Um, generally we have one of to two megabytes of uh, stacks occupied by the each uh, native thread, then this is a fixed thing, meaning that when you create a native thread, one megabyte or two megabytes uh, or memory are allocated uh, uh, on the, for that native thread, regardless of the, dimen the uh, dimension of the of the actual stack. Okay, and then uh, the context switch is quite costly because. It's uh, an operation that happens on the kernel space. Uh, conversely, for virtual thread, the, the size of the metadata are much smaller. Uh, the important thing is that uh, the stack is actually an object allocated on the heap. And this, okay, since it is all, an object, at least it grows when the stack grows. But if you have small stack, you don't have a lot of pre-allocated memory, okay? And, and the other important thing is that the, the context switch is uh, uh, much less expensive because, uh, because it happens in the user space. It's, it's just swapping a, 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 an object, the, the, the heap of a thread with, with another and, and a little more, okay? So these are the, 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 uh, the, the main difference between uh, uh, native and virtual thread. And, and uh, uh, following this difference, okay, the main claim uh, when uh, Project Loom, where virtual thread has been presented. Wow, we can create finally millions of threads on the JVM, and uh, uh, they started doing some talk, of course, promoting the the, the the technology, explaining the technology. But I believe this and and all this talk did, did uh, a presentation. Uh, uh, we, we, with live coding, creating one million virtual thread uh, on a virtual machine just because. Okay, and. In all honesty, seriously, I, I believe this is not, not something that I care. I mean, 
really the, the point is creating one million uh, threads. And also when I started seeing this presentation, I remember a, a, pre a presentation of mine that I give uh, a few years ago now at DevOx UK. Uh, in that presentation, I was comparing uh, the different uh, uh, concurrent programming models that are available on the JVM. And the w when I was uh, uh, speaking about the threads, uh, I, I said that typically, yeah, you design a multi-threading application in this way, uh, everything seems fine, but at some point it turns out to work this way. Uh, and uh, do you really want this situation with a million of puppies? I don't know, okay? Uh, so this is the very first thing that it comes to, to my mind when I uh, start uh, learning about Project Loom. Okay, and uh, yeah, this guy can, can, can start a one million thread on, on the JVM, but again, this is not the most important thing. Uh, the, the, the most important thing is, is the design of virtual thread and how they behave. And as a consequence of this, yes, you can start millions of thread of, uh, on a JVM, but it's, 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 it's probably not the goal. The goal was the behavior, okay? And, and so, what is the right reason why we need the, uh, virtual thread? Because uh, uh, we uh, are used to, to uh, increase the throughput uh, of our the 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 the, the, mm, uh, uh, the the number of things that we can do at the same time uh, in uh, in our application by using uh, reactive programming by avoiding uh, non-blocking calls, and uh, this means that uh, yes. We are achieved that goal, but at that cost of um, a much higher complexity of our code. Uh, and in reality, we would like to achieve the same goal, but with codes that look much more simple, that looks sy synchronous even if under though it isn't, okay? Uh, and uh, so this is what you have for free with, with your thread. Though. When you, again, when you do a blocking call, it's not really blocking. Uh, the, 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 the virtual thread uh, is just the scheduled from the carrier and, the, and waits, okay? So if you ask me what are the best thing that a virtual thread can do is waiting. And, and, and yeah, it, it does it very well because when you want, when when the thread is waiting, uh, it, the, the the things that uh, you care is that it waits, consuming the the the, the uh, um, uh, minimal amount of of uh, resources possible. And 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 this uh, uh, for this thing, virtual threads are really good. Okay, and if you think about it, it's also interesting to follow the evolution of concurrent programming uh, in, the, in the Java workspace. So if you remember, if you have my age, you remember that Java 1.0, 1.1 started with green threads, which are, if you think about it, the same thing as virtual threads now, uh, meaning that uh, uh, we had virtual thread that uh, were uh, uh, um, multiplexed on the same operating uh, system thread. But uh, at time, of course, the uh, reason why they did this was totally different. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking about uh, 25 or 27 years ago now. Um, and at time, uh, we didn't have uh, even a multi-core uh, machine. And uh, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, operating system uh, uh, didn't allow the Java virtual machine to access more than one process. And, and then it was a, a, an obliged design, okay? And then uh, uh, this started uh, with, uh, uh, with the Spark mas uh, machine, we, with uh, the, the Sun operating system, but then we started having uh, uh, native threads on the on the machine, and and then the uh, Java engineer at time realized that it was much more effective to use that native thread uh, and and just wrap them. So they slow well, not really slowly. With Java 1.2, you already had just native thread, and the green thread have been uh, have been abandoned. And then uh, we figured out that uh, 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 yeah. 
the, the, the multi-threading application are cool, but it's a, a little art to, to, to design them. So we started looking for uh, a different uh, uh, programming model. For instance, uh, uh, we mainly if, uh, we, with Scala, we starting uh, uh, evaluating the, the, the actor model, or, or in general, we started using uh, um, a message passing to coordinate threads. And then we figured out that also that we wanted to, again, uh, have a, a, um, a consume the resource uh, of, of uh, our machine in a smarter way. So we don't want to block a, 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 a very costly resource at a thread while waiting uh, to do something. And that's why uh, we started doing reactive programming. And then, OK, now we completed this circle, which is not really a circle, it's, it's a spiral problem. We, we returned, returned in a place that is relatively close to the original one, but again, for a totally uh, different reason and the, in a totally different context, even for what regards uh, the hardware that we are have at our disposition. Uh, okay, so in essence, uh, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, you can arri already do uh, with virtual thread something uh, that, that we, you can already do with a different technique, which is the reactive programming, okay? We, you can already do something very, very similar. When you do a blocking call in reactive programming, you do it in a lambda, so you are not blocking the event loop in that case. Uh, but uh, you are just uh, freeing it for, uh, for a thread that can do some actual work uh, instead of blocking, okay? So you can already achieve something very, very similar, if not the same with reactive programming. I'm, I'm saying uh, that uh, probably Loom is for concurrent programming, what Lambda is, has been for functional programming. I mean that, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, if you look at that statement, yeah, I have a list of person and then I'm filtering them uh, with the name that uh, starts uh, with, a and then with A and then I'm uh, uh, summing up their ages, okay? Uh, and I'm doing this with functional programming, I'm doing this uh, with the stream API using uh, Lambda. And uh, can I do this without Lambdas? Of course I can. I can do exactly the same thing without lambdas by, the, by using uh, 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 um, anonymous inner classes. It, it, it is exactly the same piece of code, but probably I don't want to, to write that thing, okay? So uh, uh, if you think about it, uh, if you think in this term, uh, for, for this context, uh, you can see uh, Loom as syntactic sugar for, for reactive programming. Okay, and of course, uh, I was thinking about, about this, and of course, I wrote a tweet about it, because why not? And then I started uh, an, a, a nice conversation with Ron Plesser, who is the, one of the lead of uh, Project Loom, and he made me notice that uh, uh, what I was saying is just one half of the story, and the other half is that uh, 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 there is something more, there is much more, because there is also tooling and observability, if you have one million uh, thread, you need to add some tooling to let people understand what's going on in your application. Uh, you have to have meaningful stack traces when, uh, when an exception happens. You have to allow the debugger uh, to work with them. So there, there is a lot of work other than, than, than this, okay? The, the syntactic sugar thing is also it's just the one half of the story and the other half is, is all this work that they have done for uh, uh, improving the, the observability and troubleshooting of your uh, uh, application based on virtual threads. So yeah, uh, I, I do this conversation on Twitter quite often, so if you want to see the uh, conversation that uh, should have been a blog post instead, maybe you can follow me. Um, okay, so um, of course, vi virtual threads are, are a tool. Uh, every tool uh, comes with uh, uh, its goodies, but also with its possible uh, problem. And 
a virtual thread in some situation may have some of this problem. One of the first problem that comes me to mind is that, uh, okay, now uh, the stacks are in reality objects that are all allocated on the heap. This means that uh, we have many more objects allocated on the heap. This, 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 this uh, is part of the uh, heap that is uh, uh, investigated by the garbage collector to figure out if some memory can be removed or not. So, in essence, virtual thread uh, uh, may uh, mm, put a, a bigger pressure on your garbage collector. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, okay, you can have uh, 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 a lot more context switches. They are lighter, it's true, bec because they happen in the user space, but maybe they can also uh, cause uh, uh, some more cache misses. Uh, and another problem that we currently have is pinning. Okay, pinning means that uh, uh, I said that uh, when a, a virtual thread uh, performs a blocking operation, it's not really blocking, it's just a schedule it from the carrier. This is uh, not always true, unfortunately, at the moment at least. For instance, when a, a virtual thread eats a synchronized block, it's really uh, blocked, meaning that not only the virtual thread is blocked, but is the virtual thread remains pinned to the carrier, and also the carrier is blocked at that point, so it, which is something that you don't want. So uh, this happens for synchronized blocks from native calls. So there are situations when uh, um, the, 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 the virtual thread can remain pinned to the uh, native thread and also the native thread is blocked and for sure you don't want this. Uh, another thing is that uh, at the moment uh, the scheduler used by the virtual thread is not pluggable, meaning that uh, you have the fork join pool scheduler, which is probably the best default choice, but it is the only one available at the moment. And also, if you think about it, also this cool uh, uh, create some problem maybe because uh, um, uh, you know the fork chain pool uh, is based on the principle of the work stealing, meaning that uh, when uh, um, a virtual thread is is blocked, uh, is disposed, is uh, removed for, from the carrier, then it could be waken up uh, on a, on a different carrier because this is how the work stealing work. But when you wake up that virtual thread on a different carrier, uh, uh, that carrier could live in a, on a, mm, very likely will live in, uh, in, um, on a different, uh, is running on a different core, meaning that uh, you miss, uh, you will have uh, uh, oh, a lot of cache misses at L1 and L2 level, level because the virtual, the virtual thread was running on a different core, uh, all its context was on that core, on the cache on that core, and now you are moving the computation on a different core. So this could be, this could be another problem. And uh, the last uh, problem that, that there is now is that, uh, okay, virtual thread works with threads locals, but I, don't, I believe you don't want uh, to do to do so, I mean, you don't want to use thread locals with uh, with, with virtual thread because uh, 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 it means that uh, you are uh, allocated the new object for each and every virtual thread. So the the idea of thread locals, the idea of giving a scope uh, to a thread was uh, meaningful for native thread because you have a few of them, but you have, if you have a million of thread and if you have a thread local for each of them, then you are uh, uh, basically blowing up the, the, the memory. So uh, you don't want to use thread locals uh, and you have to pay attention to use thread locals with, with, with virtual thread. And there is uh, at the moment uh, another uh, JP, the 429 that uh, is, uh, this is still in incubation, it's not available yet in Java 19, even not as an early preview, but uh, uh, it's another specification that should deal with this problem, okay? So this is a very quick introduction of what I learned about uh, virtual thread. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I, 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 I try to figure out a bit how they work, but I also uh, wanted to play a bit with them. 
uh, I wanted to find uh, 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 a nice way to experiment with, with them, okay? So, uh, and, and while doing so, I, I found this uh, very nice project on, uh, on GitHub uh, by, uh, from, from this guy, the Elliot, which was a, a, a game of life implementation based on, uh, on CSP, okay? So, and I forget this project and I started play, playing with it, okay? So uh, what is CSP? CSP is a, a formal language describing uh, 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 interaction uh, in a, uh, of thread in a concurrent system, okay? And it, it is quite complicated. It, it comes with its own algebra. There is a uh, lot of theory behind it. But in essence, uh, if you use CSP, it means that your, con uh, it means that your concurrent programming uh, just use uh, communication as the only synchronization primitive between threads. So how this uh, game of life uh, uh, based on CSP is, uh, is implemented? Of course, the, the core uh, object is this channel object, is the object that allows the virtual thread to, to communicate uh, uh, among them. Um, so um, there is uh, this channel object, which is basically just a blocking queue when a thread can write a uh, value and another thread can, can, can read from them, okay? So it's just a, a, a monodirectional channel through which through two thread uh, can communicate. And then uh, in, this, uh, in this application, yeah, of course, one thing that I didn't say is that every cell is modeled uh, as a virtual thread. Okay, and of course the, the, uh, the cell communicate uh, through this uh, channel abstraction, so you have different channels. You have a, a, a thick channel that is given by the coordinator, by the game of life, to, to coordinate all the cell. And then uh, you have another channel with, where each cell uh, writes uh, the result, the fact if the cell is alive or not. And then uh, you have uh, uh, two set of channel, an input and an output channel where the cell communicate with each other. That's all. Okay, so this is how the CSP paradigm works. Uh, all thread communicates with, between uh, these ch ch this channels uh, uh, and nothing else. There is not, not really any synchronization. Well, there are blocking calls, but, but the blocking is to wait for a result on the channel. Okay, so in essence, uh, what each and every cell does, they wait for uh, the tick signal coming from the coordinator, from the game of loom. Then they write on all the output channels, so on the channel putting in contact uh, the cell with the neighbor, uh, if they are alive or not. And then they collect the same information from the neighbor, so they figure out the number of uh, neighbors that are alive. They apply the game of life uh, algorithm to figure out if, okay, if, to decide if I'm alive or not at the moment. Uh, and then uh, they write this, uh, this thing, this Boolean, this re uh, result on the result channel. Okay, and the game of life, as I say, act as a coordinator, so it writes, uh, it sends this uh, tick signal to each and every cell, uh, and then uh, creates a, a grid of Boolean, which is the, the frame that will be show the, uh, shown by the, the, the game of life uh, user interface. And, uh, and then they, it collects the result from the, from the cell and send the result to the user interface. That's all. Uh, question about this implementation? It's pretty easy, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, just a quick demo of this, just to show how it works. Uh, so there is a, a number of uh, uh, patterns that uh, are available. I don't remember which of, no, these are the benchmark. I don't remember which of them are using. Anyway, the, the, there is a, a list of uh, uh, patterns available, so this is probably a bit too small. Uh, maybe I can increase the font. Uh, 
Okay, better. So there are a few patterns available, uh, which are just the, 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 the starting point, the first frame of the game of life. Uh, and then if you start this thing, you will have, uh, you will see, you will see how this thing works. Yeah, it, it, it is the game of life. Uh, just remember that each and every cell is a virtual thread. Okay. And then there is another virtual thread who coordinates them all. And uh, yeah, well, while, while doing this, yeah, uh, I, uh, I um, how can I say, I, I added more way of configuring this thing. I made it more uh, flexible. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that uh, one of the biggest controversy in humanity is that uh, if you should uh, put pineapple or, uh, on pizza or not, and of course you don't, please don't put pineapple on pizza. And then uh, while, while playing on this, I discovered that one of the other big controversy is that uh, the board should be planar or toroidal. I, uh, for some reason, I have always thought that it should be a toroid, uh, but uh, then uh, I saw that there is a long discussion if the original game of life should be planar or toroidal. Anyway, I also, implemented it, uh, the possibility of give it a, a, a toroidal topology to this. So if I uh, flip this thing, uh, yeah, it, you see uh, the, 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 uh, the glider uh, appears on the other side of the screen. Uh, but anyway, there are, there are uh, lots of ways you can uh, change this configuration and you can play with it. Another thing that you can do is uh, changing uh, the padding, padding, the default is 25, so you can make the board uh, bigger or smaller and, and stuff like this, okay? Uh, so yeah, I did some... So a lot of customization of, of, the, of the original uh, application. And the reason, of course, why I, I did this is that I wanted to experiment again. I wanted to compare how uh, virtual thread works uh, in, instead of, of native thread. So what I did is uh, writing uh, this uh, JMH benchmark. In this benchmark, I, I uh, tried uh, uh, three different uh, dimensions of the board. So one with the five cell of padding, meaning that I had uh, less than 1,000 cell in total. I remember you that one cell is a thread, so I had less than one, th one thread. And then I tried with 5,000 and with 50,000. And then uh, I did uh, some other, uh, I added some other uh, uh, parameters. I added the, the, pos the possibility to run this thing uh, with uh, uh, both either uh, native or virtual thread because this only worked uh, with virtual thread before. Uh, I added uh, the possibility to, instead of having a thread per cell, I have a thread per core, meaning that uh, if I have eight, eight core on my, on my machine, uh, I create eight group of cell and each thread take care of a group instead of, of having a one-to-one -to -one relationship in cell. And then uh, you saw that the, the main primitive uh, uh, used by the thread to communicate to each other was that blocking queue. So I tried with different implementation of the communication mechanism to, to check if it could add uh, an effect or not on the performance of this thing. Okay, And I, I put everything uh, on uh, on, on this uh, um, JMH benchmark, I created the flame graph uh, with a sync profiler. All these things, all the results are, um, are on my project. So if you go on my GitHub and uh, check the, take the fork on my project, you will see all this result. Or you can play with this and, and uh, run it on your own. Uh, so. As I said, the first, the first change uh, that I did on the original Game of Life uh, implementation is uh, having the possibility of uh, either using uh, native or virtual thread, meaning that uh, uh, now I have this uh, uh, abstraction, uh, which is a consumer of a runnable that runs the runnable, and, and uh, 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 the consumer of, of a runnable leader uh, uh, launch a uh, virtual thread or uh, launch uh, a, a native thread created with uh, the usual executor pool uh, uh, 
uh, uh, for for native threads. Okay, so I did uh, I added t t this degree of freedom, let's say, uh, and then this is the the method that is called uh, by the UI uh, to uh, to show a frame of of the game of Loom, but of course. I needed a, an headless uh, uh, um, a method for this to be called by the JMH benchmark. So this is what I did here. And so uh, this is a, a blocking method that uh, blocks on the same queue that is normally pulled by the user interface. This time is pulled by the JMH uh, 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 benchmark itself. OK, so I, I, I run this thing. I'm, uh, uh, as I said, I have a uh, different uh, dimension of uh, the, the board. I remember you that uh, f uh, five of paddings means a little less than 1,000 thread. 25 of padding means 5,000 threads. And then I have 50,000. And uh, of course, you can see that uh, in, in this situation, yeah, in both situations where I could run this thing with uh, 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 native uh, and virtual thread, uh, the, the virtual one was around uh, seven times faster with this thing. And of course, I couldn't run it, uh, 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 I couldn't run it with the biggest board uh, with 50,000 thread because I couldn't create 50,000 with native thread on my machine. Uh, and then I tried to uh, further analyze uh, this uh, result. I did some flame graph, as I said. I just remember you, if you don't know, OK. Uh, uh, how many of you know so how to read a flame graph? Not so many, OK. So uh, this show um, what a sync profiler does is doing a sampling of your uh, of your uh, application while it is running and uh, create this uh, night uh, representation uh, where uh, uh, the more a, 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 an invocation, a, a, a line is larger, the much time your application has spent inside, the, inside the, that method. So these uh, uh, flames are actually the stacks that uh, are, are called in your uh, uh, in your application and the colors mostly means yeah yellow are the the time consumed by the garbage collector typically and in green uh, you see the actual uh, uh, um, uh, java calls uh, sometimes uh, you see them uh, blue the blue one uh, typically are, are the not in line at one and then uh, the red thing is what happens in the kernel space so I did uh, uh, this. Uh, I generated this uh, flame graph for uh, for this example. So of course this is the execution with uh, with native thread. Uh, you see there are five thousand uh, native threads. So this is not readable, of course, at all, of course. But uh, yeah, you can see that there is one larger thread, which is the thread. Uh, uh, running the game of life, running the coordinator. And, you, and uh, I uh, evidenced in purple the, the method that is called by the benchmark, uh, the, and, and that the method that uh, uh, gathers all the results from each, from each shell. And, 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 in the, and it is the thread that is running the, the game of life coordinator. Okay? So this is the native uh, thread execution. And if you zoom on a specific thread, you will see there are those uh, uh, um, calls in, in, uh, in orange and in red. They are the calls in the, in the kernel space that are used mostly to do, the, to, uh, to do context switching, to, to switch uh, the, 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 the native thread uh, in, a, in and out from the, from the memory, from the execution. Okay, so. Uh, this is what happens with uh, with native threads. Uh, I think this is interesting because it shows how virtual threads uh, work. Now you see uh, eight thread because uh, I was running this on my uh, eight core machine. So you see 
um, one thread for each core, which is uh, how the fork join pool uh, works. And uh, the other interest f interesting thing that you can see is that that purple method that was the method that calls the coordinator is no longer on one single thread, but is spread across all uh, all the all the different uh, carrier because this is how the fork. Uh, uh, join pool works. This is the work still. Sometimes that thread is allocated on a different carrier, and then on a long run, you see that uh, you find uh, you find it on all carrier basically. Uh, and and yes, and the other very important thing, of course, is that if you now zoom on the execution of a single cell, you don't see anymore that uh, calls in the in the kernel space. You don't see anymore that. Uh, 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 red lines, meaning that everything happens in the user space. Uh, yeah, and I did uh, a little more investigation of this. In particular, if you launch uh, JMH with that flag, uh, you can count uh, the, also the context switches. Uh, uh, and as you can see, uh, the, the number of context switches for the native thread is crazy, of course. Uh, and this is the, the, the main cause of, uh, of the difference. And uh, yeah, if you, if you try to visualize this thing with HTOP, you, you uh, obtain exactly the same result. The, the red part is what happens in kernel space, and it's more, a little more than the half uh, for native thread, and it's almost invisible in the, for, 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 for virtual threads. Okay, so uh, another experiment uh, that I did is that uh, I wanted to try with different uh, communication channel. As I said, the original one was based on a blocking queue. But then I figured out that uh, for how the algorithm uh, is written, uh, I, I don't need t t this channel not only is monodirectional, but uh, I, at most, write one uh, value at time. I don't need the queue. I just need to hold that at most one value, okay? So I uh, created uh, an interface that I called uh, rende blocking rendezvous, and I created four uh, different implementations. Of course, the original one wraps the, the blocking queue, but I, in essence, I created these four implementations. Uh, one again is the original blocking queue. Then I tried the same with the uh, blocking transfer, which is similar to the blocking queue, but in reality it, it uses uh, uh, um, what is called the Michael and Scott lock, lock free algorithm. So it should be a little faster in this situation. And uh, uh, then uh, I uh, leverage the, f the, the fact that I know this is that I didn't need really a, a queue. I just need to exchange at most one value between, uh, between the cell and, uh, and uh, from the cell to the uh, game of life. Uh, so I, I created this thing to just hold one value and, uh, and uh, uh, do the synchronization with the reentrant. Uh, uh, again, you cannot use uh, a synchronized block to do this thing because otherwise the virtual thread will, will be pinned. Remember, this is very important. Uh, I use the reentrant lock, so when, when a virtual thread it, it's the lock, it gets properly blocked and uh, descheduled. And then uh, uh, my friend uh, Francesco Nigro made me notice a second thing. Uh, by the way, yeah, uh, I, I do lots of jokes on Twitter. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, but if you are a serious person and if you are really, really into performances, I really, really suggest you to, to follow Francesco. It's an amazing, an amazing person, an amazing engineer, and uh, uh, it finds uh, stuff that are very, very mind-blowing sometimes, really, follow him. Um, it made me notice that uh, uh, there was m one more optimization, one more thing that we know about this application that uh, we weren't uh, leveraging yet, is the fact that not only the communication uh, 
queue at the communication rendezvous, how I called, is uh, also at most one single value. But the other important thing is that uh, the writing thread is always the same and the reading thread is always the same. So I say, okay, let's try to also leverage this, this, this uh, constraint that we know to, to, to make an even better performing uh, thing, okay? And that he came up with this, uh, with this implementation uh, that indeed uh, make use of this, of, of, of this new information. Uh, so we tried that is for uh, uh, different implementation. And of course, as you can see, uh, for native threads, this is not very, very effective, but uh, you can expect this because we know that the bottleneck is somewhere else. The, the problem is caused by that huge amount of contact switches. So uh, we are not uh, gaining that much with this different uh, channels implementation. But instead, with virtual thread, it made a huge difference. And uh, if you see, uh, yeah, with, with uh, transfer queue, it's a little faster. Uh, because it's a log-free algorithm, and uh, with my uh, simple implementation with a single value, it's still a little faster. But but with with the implementation made by, by Francesco, you really had, you really really have a big jump. Uh, it's like two times and a half faster than the original implementation. So uh, it, it, it makes sense to use it. And yeah, yeah, once again, I try, we tried to figure out uh, what was going on here. And uh, if you look, uh, um, I, I zoomed it uh, on um, the put operation on the channel, but for the get, there is something similar. Uh, this is the blocking queue, and we have almost uh, 2,000 samples, 1,953 samples in the, while using the blocking queue. Uh, while uh, using the data structure of Francesco, you have only 600 samples for the same running, so it's basically three times faster. And this is the reason why it was go so good. Okay. Uh, the, the last uh, 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 thing that I tried is that, uh, okay, uh, this comparison is not very fair for native thread, of course, because uh, running uh, 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 5,000 native thread on your machine, you bump on all those problems with context switching that I was mentioning before. So I uh, implemented uh, a, a, a different uh, uh, strategy for the game of life, meaning that uh, so far we have tried to win what trend uh, per cell. Uh, but uh, I, I made this thing uh, abstract in the original game of life. I turned it into an abstract class. And then for the uh, thread per cell strategy, which is the thing that we have seen so far, what we do is that uh, uh, for each uh, cell, we call uh, the run method uh, all allocating it on a different virtual thread. And the number of virtual thread that we have is, the, is equal to uh, is equal to the number of the cell plus one, which is the coordinator. Uh, and, and then I, I implemented a different strategy, a thread per core strategy. So uh, what I did is that uh, I don't want to have uh, 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 50,000 threads, but I want to add a number of threads that is equal to the number of core on my machine. Uh, and uh, I did uh, implement this very simple uh, uh, grouping algorithm, meaning that I'm grouping uh, uh, the cell in n minus one groups. So I, I have uh, eight core in my machine. I, cre I create seven groups, uh, group at the cell in the seven group, and, and the eight uh, uh, um, thread uh, available is used, of course, again by the coordinator. And then uh, what each group uh, does is, is, is it is just a, a collection, a list of cell. And what it does, it's uh, notify the neighbors of, of its liveness and then gathering from the neighbor uh, uh, the state of the, uh, 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 their state and, and, and calculate the next state for, for uh, 
for the next frame of the game of life. That's all. Okay. And with this change, okay, these are the original result, if you remember, uh, using uh, the thread per cell uh, strategy. And then I run this again, thread per core. Now, of course, this is a little more fair for the uh, uh, native uh, thread implementation. And uh, as you can see, in this case, the native thread uh, 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 not that much, but a little faster. And in essence, yeah, I changed the, the rule of the game and, and uh, by doing so, I also changed the winner, right? Uh, and this is more or less what I have. So to recap, uh, uh, virtual thread are not faster thread. Again, the main feature is that they are very good to wait. So it's, n it's not that if you do a CPU bound task on a virtual thread, it, it runs faster than, than uh, if you do the same of a, on a native one, there is anything magic, right? So virtual thread are very good to wait, uh, use them this way, but uh, uh, pay, attention, uh, pay attention to pinning, of course. And in other words, they are very good to maximize the uh, uh, utilization of resource of your, of your machine to improve uh, throughput. And uh, they do this uh, without paying the cost of additional complexity introduced by, by reactive programming. Okay? So if you ask me, are virtual thread really good? Yes, I believe they are especially if you have lots of blocking operation. I wrote, I wrote uh, IO bound. Uh, it's not really IO. I, I didn't have any particular IO in my example, but it's most that if you have a lots of blocking operation, yes, consider using a uh, virtual thread. Uh, the fork join uh, scheduler, the, the work stealing scheduler, uh, could be occasionally good also for CPU bound uh, 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 operation, but uh, still, uh, I, 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 I'm a little afraid of the cached misses that it could, case, it could cause. So uh, probably this deserve a, a little more investigation. And in essence, uh, virtual thread are not drop-in replacement for Nadi one. It's not said that you have a, an application and you decide uh, to just replace native thread with virtual thread, and everything goes better. It's not like that. Okay, and. Uh, Another takeaway for this, which is really, really important, okay, virtual thread are cool, but uh, as you see, the domain knowledge is, is still very, very important. There is nothing magic. magic. Uh, you, uh, you always have to notice uh, where you can improve, uh, which assumption you can do that can simplify your code and that can make it faster, like Francesco did. So the domain knowledge is still uh, the, 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 the best tool to improve the, the performance and the throughput of your application. And uh, you have to leverage it. Uh, and that's all really what I have. I put here a few references. There's the link to the original implementation. There's the link to my fork and a few articles that I read while preparing this presentation. There is also that single writer principle is also the, the article explaining uh, the uh, um, blocking queue implementation uh, uh, well, it's not a queue. The 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 the, the channel implementation uh, was uh, w that it was very performing, as you so uh, uh, wrote by my friend. Uh, and, and that's all. Yes, that's really all I have. I have two minutes for question. If you have any, thanks. Thank you.